Hey, what's up? Mr. G here. And in this video, we're going to be going through questions number 21 through 30 for the Autodesk AutoCAD Gmetrics uh, Certified User Practice Exam, number one. Okay. So we're going to open up home.dwg. And what are we looking for? Under the View tab, we're going to go to the Snap Named View. So I like going up here to top, and we're going to Snap right here. So this says, draw a line between the midpoints of line one and line two. So I'm going to use the line tool right here. And it's important that you draw the line starting at point one and going to point two, because the question asks you what is the delta x of the line you just drew. And delta x has to do with the direction that the line is going. So if you started your line at point two and went to point one, you would get the wrong answer. So just make sure if they ever ask you a question that has a point one or point two or A, B, C, something like that, just make sure you always try and start with whatever comes first, like one, two, or A, and then B, C. All right, so I just drew a line from midpoint to midpoint there. What is the delta X? I just select the line. I've already got my properties panel up, and I look for the delta X right here, 26.1. Okay, I'm going to close that for a second, and close home, hit no, and open it again. This time we're going to small line named view, which is here. Okay, this says draw a closed polyline starting at point 1010, moving clockwise using absolute coordinates to create a polygon by typing in all the given points in order below. So. I'm gonna just start this out by not messing with any of my settings because if I was taking the test, this is probably how I would start it. Um, yeah, it says using absolute coordinates, but I mean, let's say we don't really know what, what that is. So let's start by making a, it says polyline. So I'm gonna use the polyline tool here. And it says start at point 10, 10. So what you would think to do would be type 10 comma 10, enter. And it starts the point on your screen, so that's good. And then I would keep going. 15 comma 17, 25 comma 18, 28 comma 13. And then I would imagine it wanted me to end it next. And if I look at this, obviously that doesn't look anything like this picture up here. So I know I'm doing something wrong. Um, if you have dynamic input on, it turns on relative coordinates. So what that means is on your drawing you have a location that is 0, 0. So if I start a line at 0, 0 and then I go to 10, 10, it starts from 0, 0 and then goes over 10, up 10 from that location. Um, let me start that again. 0, 0, enter 10, 10. And then what you can do again is you can type 10, 10 again and it just keeps going from wherever you're currently at. It kind of counts wherever you're currently connected as a zero, zero, and 10, 10 again, will just move it over and up 10 again. So what you have to do for this question is actually turn dynamic input off, and that will make your coordinates um, absolute. So now I'm gonna do 10, or zero comma zero, and I'll do 10 comma 10, and just to explain that, I've just made that a little line right there. If I were to type 10 comma 10 again, it wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't create a new section of the line because I'm already located at 10, 10 because I turned dynamic input off and now I'm working in absolute um, coordinates. So when I hit 10, 10, nothing happens because I'm already connected at 10, 10. So now that I have that off, I'm gonna start my polyline again. So I use the polyline tool starting at 10 comma 10 and it also doesn't show up on your mouse when you type this stuff in. It, it shows up down at the, the bottom command line. So 10 comma 10 is there. 15 comma 17. I'm zoomed out a little far there, so let's zoom in a bit. 25 comma 18. 28 comma 13. And then I would just close it. You could type 10 comma 10 to go back to that starting point. And that looks a whole lot closer to the picture that we've got right there. So. I wanted to know the length of the closed polyline, so I right click and go to properties, and I'm looking for length. 
42.73. Continue. All right. I'm going to close that one, open home back up, and I would strongly recommend turning dynamic input back on as soon as you're done with que any question that has to deal with absolute coordinates. All right. We're going to the dimensions named view now. I'll zoom us in here. It says place an angular dimension on the object using line one and line two. So the angular dimension tool can be found under the annotation tab. We're going up here to this little drop down. I always like using this in, instead of using this automatic dimension tool. That way I can pick exactly which type of dimension tool I want to use. Um, it says angular, so I'm going angular. I'm clicking line one and then line two. And as I zoom out, it'll tell me how many degrees there are right there. What is the value shown in the dimension? 30. Number 24, we're still in home. All I did was add an dimension on that, so I'm just going to erase it and go here. Okay. This says, change the print setup to ANSI expand B paper size. What is the unit's value within the plot scale section? So this question's kind of vague. I don't even know if I'm going to get the answer correct. I don't know if it's talking about in model or some kind of layout. Let me make this bigger for a second. So I don't know if they're talking about in layout here or in model. I'm going to try it in model and see if I get the correct answer first. Let's see here. So. I'm going to go to print, which is just control P, or you can hit this A up here and go to print. And that'll bring up this print window. This A in SI expand B is talking about the paper size. So the paper size would be right here. So I'm going to look for A in SI. It should be alphabetical. A in SI expand B, 11 by 17 inches paper size. And then units value changes right here under the plot scale section. So I'm reading that right. And we're going to try 383.2. We got it right. Okay, cool. I think the important part of that is making sure you don't change the printer right here because that could affect the numbers. All right, let's close that. Which of the following features, this one just looks like a multiple choice question. So which of the following features allows you to create a rounded curve with a specific radius between two existing lines? Um, that answer is fillet, I believe. So let's give you a little example here. I'll draw two existing lines and a rounded curve between them. So the fillet tool is right up here. You click radius down at the bottom and you set a radius, I'll just type one, enter. And then you click the two lines and it should create a curve. And the proper, if I go to the properties of that, the curve will be, the radius of that curve will be one, which I set just a second ago. All right, so that should be fill it. All right, using the move command, you decide to move an object using the coordinates at 12 comma negative four. In this scenario, the value 12 represents the horizontal distance from the object's starting point, the vertical distance from the object's starting point, the horizontal distance from the UCS origin, or the vertical distance. So the first number, um, I'm pretty sure, let's see, the first number is always going to be the horizontal distance, and then the second number is always going to be the vertical distance. It's just figuring out um, if it's talking about from the origins, or from the object's starting point, or from the UCS origin. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line at zero comma zero here. So that's where my line is and, or that's where zero zero is. It's where the uh, red and green line come to a point there. I'm just gonna make a little line there. So if I'm moving this, if I hit the move tool and grab it from there and I hit at, 12 comma negative 4 it goes over 12 horizontally and then it goes down negative 4. I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to hit move again click that same point and do the same thing at 12 comma negative 4. 
and it did the same thing from that point right there. So that should give me the clue that it's going from the object starting point, the horizontal distance from the object starting point. It didn't go from the, uh, the origin right there, or else the line would have just stayed in the same spot. Number 27, which feature do the icons in the image below represent? So these are object snaps, or object snap modes, I guess they call it. If you type OS enter, so object snaps are just these green boxes or green triangles or green shapes that show up that allow you to snap onto other existing objects. If you type OS enter, it'll give you a picture of, or a list of which ones you have on and a little icon of what they look like. So, number 28, which of the following properties cannot be changed for every object on a layer using the by layer option? So I'm just going to open up this home drawing right here and click on something. And under properties, you have three different things that can be changed by, that can match and be set to by layer. You've got the object color, which is here. You've got the line weight, which is here. And you've got line type, which is here. So color, line type, thickness, all of those can be changed. Um, I don't believe transparency can be changed, at least not right here. You can change the transparency underneath, but there's no option for setting it to the, to the certain layer. So I'm going to go with transparency here and see if we're right. That is incorrect. Okay. Let's investigate that a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the layers here. So, although there's, there's transparency here, I don't see where you can set it to by layer, but if you open up the layers panel, you can set it in here. There's transparency. So maybe that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about this drop down. They're talking about an actual layer properties. So I think they're trying to trick us on this question by the wording of thickness. Technically thickness is different than line weight. So line weight is how thick, I mean, ultimately it is how thick the line it looks uh, when you draw it. But there's also something called thickness, which is here in the properties it specifies the thickness of the line to be honest with you I don't know the difference between line weight and thickness so let's try and see if we can figure that out if I draw a line here and then I go to properties and I set the line weight to something like this and turn line weight display on it looks like that I'm gonna look at it in 3d just in case so there's my line, it's got a thickness, or a line weight, and I'm going to change my thickness here just to see what that does, 5. Okay, so it changes really how tall, I guess, the line is. So thickness has to deal with how, because as I change this thickness, it gets taller like that in 3D, even though it looks the same from the top view. So hopefully this is the right answer. Thickness, let's try that. And that's correct. Kind of a trick question there. I don't like that one. That's a nasty question. All right. This one says what type of dimension is shown in the image below. Um, that's just a, if we have a circle, actually that kind of looks like a ellipse of some kind. So I'm going to make a kind of an oblong circle here. That is just a linear dimension. A linear dimension just shows, it could either show height like so. I made that kind of big. Let's scale that down a little bit so we can actually see it. So that would be an example of a linear dimension. Linear dimensions can only be horizontal or vertical. Um, an aligned dimension would be going kind of at an angle. You could make an aligned dimension go like this and it'll tell you the distance between going that way. But anyway, this is definitely a linear dimension. Even though it's telling you what the diameter is, well, no, because it's a oblong shape, so never mind that. All right, definitely linear. And the last one, which of the values in the image below must be changed so that the block is not distorted upon insertion? 
which of the values in the image below must be changed so that it's not distorted. Okay, so that probably has to do with scale here. Um, it would be distorted if the x value is 3 and then these y and z are both 2 um, because they probably should all match so that way the x, y, and z would all be the same. So I'm going to go to the scale x value, scale x right there. And let's see if I can give an example of what that looks like. If I insert a block, if I have a block, or if I have one that looks similar to that, let's just, oh, that's pretty large. Let's move that. So every block has properties associated with it. So I've just inserted a random block here. And you've got the scale x, y, and z. If I were to change one of these values, it would distort how it looks. So these all kind of should match if you want it to be how it was intended. But if I change this to like 10, it just makes the X, which is how wide it is, only 10 instead of 25.4. So um, this would be the incorrect answer here. Or the correct answer. All right. And that is it for numbers 21 through 30. And that's it for the whole test.